Welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church Online. My name is Marian Brown, one of the associate pastors, and this is our on-demand version of the sermon that will be preached on this Sunday morning. And please know that our Sunday services will be live streamed beginning at 9 a.m. for the contemporary service and 11.15 for the traditional service. If you would like to have the entire worship experience on demand, that will be available on Monday morning. We appreciate you being a part of our online community and we invite you to be active and participate through your giving. And so we thank you for your support and your generosity. Before we listen to this Sunday sermon, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we ask that you remind us that wherever we are, we are on holy ground. And so may you help us make space. So may we receive a message that you have for us in this moment. Be in our hearts so that it's open. Be in our ears so that they are open and be a part of our lives so that we are open to receive a challenge and an invitation. Work within us now and all around us so that we may know your presence and we may feel it fully. Through a moment now of words and scripture, speak to us, amen. Let's listen to this Sunday sermon. This morning I'll be reading Matthew 26, verses 14 through 29. And this is what it says. Then one of the twelve, named Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me to deliver him up to you? And they weighed out to him thirty pieces of silver. And from then on, he began looking for a good opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to prepare for you? To eat the Passover. And he said to them, Go into the city and a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I am to keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. Now when evening had come, he was reclining at table with the twelve disciples. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you that one of you will betray me. And being deeply grieved, they each one began to say to him, Surely not I, Lord. And he answered and said, He who dipped his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man is to go just as it is written of him, but woe to that man through whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And Judas, who was betraying him, answered and said, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He said to him, You have said it yourself. And while they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is to be shed on behalf of many for forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of the, this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Pray with me. Jesus, this day, may it be a day of praise. May it be a day of thanks. And Jesus, may it be a day of paying attention. Speak to us in a way that we might hear this day. And give us those ears that hear and hearts that listen. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Leo Viscaglia tells a story about a fellow who was driving out in the country. He was coming around a hairpin turn when he wasn't paying enough attention and his car went over the center line. At that time, a woman was coming in the other direction and she had to swerve to miss him. Her window was down and she yelled, Pig! And that's when the man, he, he was insulted. He couldn't believe that someone yelled out the window, Pig! So he yelled back, Sow! That's when he ran around the corner and hit a big pig that was in the middle of the road. <laughs> Sometimes we don't know what the message is. Sometimes we think it's an insult when it's really a warning. 
And much of life is spent that way. We really don't know what the message is. Sometimes we take it as insult. Sometimes we take it as warning. Over and over again, Jesus told those stories that we might pay attention. Over and over again, Jesus lived those stories that we might pay attention, that we might have those those ears that hear. Just a few verses before the verses we read this morning. Chapter 25. One of the most well-known of of all of the parables of Jesus. Jesus talks about the final judgment. And He says at that time He'll he'll separate all the nations. People are sheep on on His right and, and the goats on His left. And He'll turn to the sheep. And He'll say... I was hungry, and you fed me. Thirsty, you gave me something to drink. Stranger, and you you invited me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. Imprisoned, and you came to me. And they'll say, well, when did we see you? Hungry, or thirsty, or stranger, or naked. And, and they'll say, even as you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. That you were paying attention. Every day is a decision. A decision in the everyday, in the ordinary, the the little choices that we make. Did we see Jesus or we move away from Him? Because those on His left, He turns to them and, and says, depart from Me. And they say, why? Because He said, because I was hungry and you didn't feed Me. I was thirsty and you didn't give Me anything to drink. That you didn't pay attention when I was right there in the midst. Well, some people might see that as an insult and others might see it as a warning. The message is pay attention. Pay attention. And just after this, there's a story where a woman with a very costly perfume... She's, she breaks out in spontaneous worship and she pours that, that costly perfume on Jesus' feet and pours that costly perfume as an act of worship on His head. And Jesus calls it a good thing. But the disciples, they become indignant and they call it a waste. The point is, pay attention. Pay attention. That every day there's a choice. A choice. A choice to move closer to Jesus or or farther from Him. This morning, we read these verses. And it starts off with, then one of the twelve named Judas Iscariot. I think it'd be easier for us to, to skip over there, but Matthew wants to make sure that we don't. Because we read just a little bit later in verse 20. And then he was reclining with the 12 disciples. And then in verse 47, which I didn't read this morning, it says, while he was speaking to Judas, one of the 12. Well, Matthew is giving us a device to say, pay attention. This is it. This is important. It's one of the ways that the Bible uses as literary devices to say, if, if, if things are, are the similar story, same story, if the words are the same, whatever is in between those brackets, Pay attention. It's shooting off a flare. It's writing in a highlighter. It's saying, pay attention to these words. And that's what it says. One of, one of the twelve named Judas Iscariot. And we know all about Judas. We know that he began to negotiate with the chief priests and the scribes about how he might betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And I began to dig and look and well, how much was 30 pieces of silver? And I found everything all over the map. That um, how, uh, People don't know exactly what that coin was. Some say, well, you know, it was about $6. Others say, no, it was $91. And others say $200. And then I think I just had to laugh at myself just a little bit for trying to make the importance of this be about the amount of money that Judas betrayed Jesus for. As if there would be some amount that would make it be worthwhile. That would, it would be like trying to discover what was the apple that 
that Adam and Eve ate from that they traded an apple for paradise. You know, if it was a Granny Smith, it wouldn't be worth it. But you know, if it was one of those juicy apples from Nepal, you know, then maybe you've got, no, maybe we've got a bargain there if it was a really great apple. No, the choice is that we trade eternity in everyday decisions, in our choices that we make, little by little, every day, for nearly nothing. And it says that Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. The Old Testament tells us 30 pieces of silver is how much a slave cost. That Judas, Judas right here, is choosing his master. He's choosing his master, and every day in the ordinary, we have opportunity to pay attention with our choices. And every day in the ordinary, in the commonplace day, we make those choices to choose greed as our master or to follow Jesus as our master. It's very similar to what God says in the Old Testament. You have life and death before you. Choose life. That every day, those are the choices. Those are the choices. In these 30 pieces of silver, it certainly may have been a choice for greed. And that was what Judas chose. And we, we tend to, to discard Judas after that. Don't be greedy. And that's the message of Judas. But what is the message he hears? The message is pay attention. The message is pay attention because there are choices that are unknown to you and me that we make every day that are all around us that we choose. We choose our master. It says, then one day, one of the twelve named Judas Iscariot. We ought not jump over that too quickly. Judas was a common name in Jesus' day. Nowadays, because of his, the betrayal, Judas is not a common name. I don't know one person named Judas. And I, as a matter of fact, I don't know of one person named Judas. It was a common name in Jesus' day because it was a der derivative of the name Judah, one of the 12 tribes of, of Israel. It was one of the sons of Jacob. So many people named their children Judas or Judah. And this Judas was one of those, but it's Judas Iscariot. Now, usually the second name would have been where he was from. But theologian William Barclay tells us that the, there's no record of any town or city named Iscariot that probably what Iscariot is, is is a derivative of the word Sakari, which means dagger carrier. And the Sakari were these, these zealots that carried a dagger for looking for an opportunity to kill, to kill a Roman official, to kill anyone who collaborated with Rome. And the probability is that Judas Iscariot was one of those Sakari, a religious zealot that was there. And when he saw Jesus and the disciples enter into Jerusalem during the Passover and the crowds, the pilgrims from all over the world gathered there and began to pull off their clothes and lay them in the street and break off palm branches and wave them and shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name. He knew that he had popular support. He knew that he had the political power and that really what he was trading for 30 pieces of silver was power, was popular support. And then maybe it hits a little closer to home that the message is that we pay attention because there are 
choices all around us every day that uh, we would like that power. We might like that popular support. We might like the forces of those to agree with us. And that really, the message of, of pay attention, that those choices that we make, it, it's getting a little more difficult now, that we can't separate ourselves too much from Judas, that, that yes, it, it, we choose. We choose our master every day by the choices that we make, and sometimes it's greed, sometimes it's power, sometimes it's popular support. But it doesn't end there. I said three times right here in this text. It has that little phrase, one of the twelve. Here in verse 14 and then verse 20, reclining at the table with the twelve. That Jesus turns to Judas and tells him he's been paying attention. That one of them will betray him. Jesus has been paying attention that he's not caught off guard, that Jesus isn't caught by surprise, he's not caught unaware by what G Judas is doing. And I believe that God speaks to you and me every day. That he's not caught off guard, he's not caught by surprise, he's not caught unaware. We are when we don't pay attention. But Jesus, Jesus is... is is paying attention, and he warns Judas. Not an insult, but a warning. A warning that he is the one who will betray him. He even says what will happen, that it would be better for him not to be born. And I believe that every day, God is speaking to us, giving us choices who will we serve as our master? And then Jesus takes the loaf. The loaf of bread and he breaks it. He says, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. And likewise, he takes the cup. And he says, drink you all of this. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. And I believe this is the point. This is the message. This is where we ought to pay attention that Judas is offered forgiveness. That it's not just the 11 disciples that you know, didn't do that bad. It's the one who's done worse than anyone in history. The one who is the most despicable, the one who is the most despised, is the one that's offered forgiveness. Pay attention. You've been forgiven. That today is a good day to stop acting like a slave. Maybe it is a slave to greed or to power or to, to popular support. Or maybe... Maybe it's that thing that you think is the most despicable. And you've been a slave to shame. There's nothing religious or nothing honorable about believing a lie. You've been forgiven. Jesus has broken the power of sin. And in this covenant, He shows us how He breaks the power of sin with the brokenness of His body and his, his blood poured out for you and me on the cross. And He points to how He's broken the power of sin. That through the resurrection, He calls us to take His body and His blood in our lives. That in that one act, He, he points to the cross. He points to the resurrection. That's the message of Jesus. The message of Jesus is forgiveness for you. Now, this day, the message of Judas was he didn't need it. He didn't need it. 
this morning, we'll be serving communion here at, at the service. Then we might look to the bread and look to the cup as the cross of Christ, that what He did on the cross was enough to take the most despicable, the most hated thing that we've ever done onto Himself. It may be greed, it may be power, it may be popularity, it may be shame. Whatever it is, He took it on Himself. And He nailed it to the cross to take away His power. And then He invites you and me to eat and to drink that His life might live in our lives. This morning it may be that you've been hauling around something, carrying something, maybe as a badge of honor, but it's a lie. The message of Christ is forgiveness. The message of Judas is you don't need it. Or you've done something too great to receive it. Or it's for someone else and not for you. I'd like to pray with you. Join with me in prayer. Jesus, this day, give us those, those eyes that see and those ears that hear and that we pay attention that every day in little ways, in the common and the ordinary, that we might make a, a choice. A choice to, to follow You. You've given us that power. Power enough to, to recognize You. Power enough to see in the small and the everyday. Breathe that power in and through us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us online. It is a blessing to have the gift of technology to have sermon this way. We thank you for participating. And just a reminder, if you want to see the live services, 9 a.m. on Sunday for contemporary and 1115 Sunday morning for traditional services. And always we will have the full on-demand worship experience on Monday morning. And if there's ever a time that you would like to join us here at the physical location, we're located at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, Roswell, Georgia. We want to be connected with you. If you have a prayer request, please let us know by emailing pray at rumc.com. And we would love for you to be a part of our ministry through your giving. If you would like to support our campus and our ministries, you can do so at rumc.com slash give. And now hear these words of a benediction. Love without fear, serve with commitment. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.